Ladies and gentlemen, this is Harold Calcivella. <laughs> Thank you for the warm welcome. Um, it is a little bit difficult for me today to find the right uh, approach because I did five hours of lecture and interviews on the last basis conference and basically everything I have to say has been said as it goes to details. So I, I don't think it makes much sense to repeat myself. But what I really, really, really feel like is to uh, turn to the other part of uh, being a human. This is not the information, this is the inspiration. And to, to try to embed the facts that I have shown with the basis 46 into, yeah, I, I might even call it my world of the view, because my, my, my view on the world has been growing while I have been learning all this stuff. And uh, I'm looking at the world from a little bit changed perspective now. And it, it happens sometimes that uh, people react on my YouTubes in a way that they say, well, the first one was kind of okay, but the th second and the third one, they were really far out. And from my point of view, I, I just arrived in this world um, behind the paradigm shift. And for me, the positions I see other people are living in, they are really far out, because uh, maybe other people call this living in the matrix. And uh, the way of living in this fake world, it, it doesn't work with me anymore. I think I have a kind of straight, straight view on things, and especially a straight emotional view on things. Uh, that I would like to share and I would like to inspire people to have the courage to look at the world in the same way and to make their deci decisions based upon this view. And um, in a way it is all connected to this core topic, transhumanism, because this is the, from my view, the big threat humanity is facing, that Either we ourselves are turning ourselves into bio-robots or some entity from outside is manipulating us to do so. And this for me is the core topic. But the, the solution to this core topic is purely emotional. Um, and I, I would like to take you on, on a little journey to, to experience this different way of looking at things. And the first thing that I think everybody should realize is that there is a, a misbelief most of the people are living with. We think that we need our intelligence and uh, our excellent minds to keep us from being evil. Yeah, this is how most of the people are educated. This is what every control system is based on on this planet. And this is a, a really deep belief system. And I, I, I have seen quite a few personal stories in my life. And I, I always dealt with psychology. And my experience was exactly the opposite. My experience with humans is that we are from the basis of everything. We are good at heart. And we always try to do our best. Whatever we do, wherever we come. And if the outcome of what we do is something different, there's a trick behind, and we are not the tricksters. And we, we, can, we can look for examples. Let's say, uh, has, has somebody stolen in his life? Uh, I'm 100% sure we will find a few among the, the audience. Um, I bet behind this stealing there's a sensation of a scarcity we live in that is injustice. And we come to a point where this scarcity is so painful that it feels right just to break a rule, to set yourself out of this scarcity into abundance. Even if it's not following the rules of society, there is more uh, 
justice to doing the crime than staying in a scarcity that you, did, that you do not deserve. This is about stealing. If you go to violence, I know a guy, he worked in psychiatry in prisons in Germany. He was dealing with really bad cases, people who were criminal, violent criminals out of psychological problems. And he healed them all because he realized that there is something good in us that is called aggression. Aggression comes from aggregere in Latin, which means to meet somebody out in the world, to face each other. And we are facing each other because everyone wants to conquer a space to get creative on. And if society is stopping us from getting creative and expressing ourselves in the world, this starts to hurt and after a while, our soul is screaming for something that is changing the rules. And this is violence. The emotion behind is 100% healing and positive. And the state authorities, they love to identify violence with aggression, to kind of give us the feeling that this positive aggression is something we should not do because they want to deal with non-creative people instead of creative people. And from there, many, many, many problems come. If you betray your partner, you know, the most ugly thing, we can agree on this, we can do it. It is not ugly. Everybody on this planet, planet has the knowledge about divine love. And we're stuck in relationships that are based on sexuality, standards of beauty, social security, that are glued together by law and lies. And the, the, the basic instinct we have is go out there and search for the divine love we are able to live. And this is something holy and this is something good. Um, let's take it all the way down the road. Uh, if you look at child abuse, even there, humans always reproduce the love they have got as a child. And this is coming in bloodlines, this is coming in family traditions. And I had insight into people who abuse their children. And when they do this, for them, this feels right. And this impulse to do the right thing, even the mercenary that is killing, he's doing his job, and he's, try he's trying to balance his, his paycheck. In his system, he's doing the right thing. And this is something really, really deep within the human race, that we are trying to do good, good and we're trying to, to do the right thing. So if you look at the results we're getting with the system, it's a disaster. We're destroying ourselves, we are destroying the planet. And um, I think it is, it is not difficult to see, if you have seen into the hearts of people, that there are some tricks around and that there are some tricksters around who somehow manage to create a world in which we harm each other while we are trying to be good. And um, I, I would like to, to just name the, the most important games we are playing. We, we could look at them uh, as games. And the, the first one that is really really self-destructive is the money game. The money game is based on the feeling of scarcity, whether it is necessary or not. If there is real scarcity out there, I do not mind to, to count and share, you know, equally. But most of the things on this planet are there in abundance. And it's completely stupid to create scarcity, to have it tradable. But this is exactly what we do. We have this feeling of scarcity in the center of our culture. This is the money business. It is the idea of owning things, owning land, possessing things. It's, this is nothing else than to grab something you do not need and to create the scarcity for somebody else because you're not able to let go from it. Unless somebody gives you a stupid thing in between that you can grab instead in your hand, this is what we call money, and then you can force somebody else to give you something you want to have instead. And everything in this game, every single aspect of this game is destructive. 
because the motivation is completely spoiled. If I hold money and give it to somebody for a service, I force him to do something he doesn't want to do. I'm violating his life. If I go to earn money, I am violating my own life because I'm doing things I, I, I don't want to do just to get hold of this bullshit. And in the sum of it, all of us are doing things we are not even supposed to do because they are destructive. Yeah? So there's nothing good. And if somebody comes up and says, but without the monetary system, uh, there would be no justice in the world. I can just look at the world and see fucking 17 families owning more than half of all the assets of the world. And then I can just ask, what kind of, of uh, uh, logic do you want to protect? Everything that can go wrong already went wrong. And without money, we wouldn't have this situation of a few families owning everything. So even this argument does not count. The only thing that stops us from stopping this madness is that we, we pre prefer to, to, to kind of control the short, the short wear to fight our scarcity instead of giving up the, the concept as a whole. It's easier for us to go to work, you know, to, to, to spend our time with things that we don't want to do actually, to have the money on the account, to force somebody else to supply us with stuff, than to think twice and step out of the game. And I, I know it's not easy in the world we created. Um, this is why you need to be tricky to first educate your mind without fucking up your life. And there are exactly two ways I experience that you can do this way. It's going back to slavery on one or the other side of the slavery game. You can go to a company or a family, work for them, tell them I don't want to earn money, I'm just contributing the, all my working time I have and all my effort and all my love to the thing you're doing. Please take care of me while I'm doing this, of me and my family. This is possible. Many agricultural projects work this way, that they take volunteers and take care of them as long as they work there. Or you can do the opposite. If you're in the position to have a business or something where you can take in people, fully supply them, you're giving somebody else the chance to free himself from this money game. And it's not easy. I always quote this, this ape thing when they, the biologists uh, tried to teach apes to use money. And after three days, it worked fine, they, they, they caught the game. After three weeks, the boys were stealing and betraying, and the girls uh, started to prostitute themselves. And after, I don't know, nine, ten weeks, the scientists decided to stop the game because they became so self-destructive in the social order that they were losing the, the apes, and they tried to get the money back from the apes. Big mistake. Yeah? They didn't let go from the game. This is what happened to us. This is one of the very, very destructive games we are caught in, and we need to get out to get free. The second one, I call it the Luciferic game. This is about power. Power is about control. And again, it is very something, uh, something very comfortable for us to, to live with, although it is ugly. What do I do if I join a hierarchic structure? I tell the one above me, please let me share your power. I will receive orders and feel strong while I fulfill your wishes. So basically, I'm giving away self-responsibility, um, get the license to treat other people bad while I'm treated bad. And the, the only short advantage I, I, I get from this is that I do not stand in self-responsibility. If something goes wrong, it was my boss who made the mistake, because I just received orders. And this is politics, this is economy, this is uh, Freemasonry and all the other structures working in the hidden. Everything that is in this structure of a hierarchy is following this Luciferic game. And this is also destructive because it is the absolute opposite of freedom. 
and the, ab op the absolute opposite of self-responsibility. And uh, it is the reason why the decision and the view of the world never fall onto the same place. And this is the, this division, you know, if, 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 if you are responsible for what you do and only for what you do, you're facing the results of the things you do. If somebody else is responsible, you can see as much suffering as you want to see. You, d you are not in the position to change anything. This is why we need to come back to the self-responsibility. This is the second thing where somebody is tricking us into positions, situations where we cannot do other than harm ourselves. Third one, religion. In all this disaster, we are suffering and for our own sake, we are looking for answers above or below or somewhere else. And what we find is, you know, this beautifully built, huge buildings, the big ones of the, in the villages, um, telling us you're a sinner, telling us you're bad and you need to pay money for forgiveness, or you need to go to Mecca once in your life, to, to, to become a good person. Before that, you're worth only half. And um, if you look what is done in the name of these religions in this world, we definitely can say this is one of the main sources for the disaster. It's, it's just fact. Look in whose name people are killing, and you will find the names of their god whether it is in India, in Pakistan, or in the Arabic world at the moment, or in Northern Ireland, wherever you see people killing each other, religion is involved. And the last one that is somehow, it's not, it's not a topic of its own because it's, it's kind of uh, part of all the other system. This is language. And this is a little bit... Uh, more difficult to understand, unless maybe you go to the roots. We had this marvelous moment in, in history when the Western religions became their core information uh, at Mount Sinai. And this was a kind of stone with sentences written on top of it, what we are not allowed to do. And this is a trick in itself because the subconsciousness of humanity, the language field, doesn't actually doesn't go together with negations. Nature doesn't know a negation. It doesn't know no, it doesn't know not, it doesn't know no neither. This word, it, is, it has no possibility to, to unfold physical reality in the way of creating reality. It is just falling down from the sentence and, and forgotten. If somebody says, no more war, the thing that is kind of listened to in the collective subconsciousness of humanity is the sentence, more war. And now look at these 10 sentences written on the stone. Do not murder. Yeah. This is the core of the evil because somebody introduced this negation. And this has been done with a very high knowledge of the power of language. If you, if you go, go back to the, to the original, to the original um, uh, language we had on the planet, we're basically all sitting on one language root that is can be identified with a Hopi dialect that is the same as the root of uh, the um, Indo-Germanic languages, uh, the purest form you can find in a few villages in Finland. And in this language, the, the meaning and the vibrational expression of words are still identical. And if you look at these, um, at these core language of humanity, you will find that there is a form of negation. And this language is negating things by turning around the order of letters. 
And uh, in Hebrew, before these things were written on the stones, if you wanted to, to say, do not, um, it was done with the letters al. You will not, if you translate it in our poisoned language. But from, from the word in this al, it is the same as in German halt or halt. Al means stop before you do something. It is not a negation. And if you reverse the al, it is turning into law. La. So the reverse of uh, stop in, in the real meaning is go. And the meaning they gave to the world law in the, in the, in the order we have is no, do not. So actually there's a complete inversion of language within the, the set of rules our Western culture is based on. And you can see it working nowadays, wherever you look at. People are creating exactly the opposite of what they want to live in. So we are finding a full set of disasters we are living in because we are living inside this matrix and we never manage to look outside the square. We are caught in the games. We are caught because we are sitting on this short advantages that the game is giving us. We have forgotten that these games are games, so we are not able at all to, to get an abstract view on what we are doing. And if we would, we would immediately stop playing these games. And this is successful in therapy. Yeah, you have the alcoholic game, it works with five positions, and if somebody who had been drinking had been cured based on, on, on game therapy, um, he's really cured, he, he can drink a glass of wine every now and then, he's not going to start again, because he's out of the game. He realized that the addiction is not to the matter, the addiction is always to the game. And uh, this is kind of where we are stuck at the moment, or many, many, or most of the people are stuck at the moment. They cannot even imagine a life outside of these games, because this is self-responsibility again. There you can see how they interact. The games interact on different levels. The money topic is very closely bound to the hierarchy. State is dealing with money, taking in taxes. Um, all the other social engineering is put on top of these games, like, like uh, um, if you live in a completely rationalized world with a high specialization in, in, in the things you work, you're not able to supply yourself. So this immediately drops you into scarcity when you stop serving the system. We are dependent on the system. These three Ds, dependency, dread, um, debility, that all the, the social engineering is based on in our world. It is designed to function on top of these basic games. So if, if we skip the games, if we stop playing the games, all the rest is falling off like dust. And we come out as what we are, loving, free beings that are able to manifest a beautiful world immediately. Um, now, I, I think we have, a, we have a rough picture of the tricks. And if there's a trick or if there is a number of tricks, I bet there is a trickster around. And this is something that really sometimes is, has been difficult to see through because he's coming with so many different faces is coming within the state system, within the religious system, within the monetary system. And you need to understand the symbols used to see that, is one, that this actually is one source. And yeah, basically, th this is it. Does anyone know, know where this picture comes from? Star Trek, it is the, the Borg entity, which is a black cube, and it is associated with Saturn. If you look into ve the very old occult traditions in Egypt, in the Middle East, 
um, these two things are connected. If you go, for example, into the Isis temple, you have the, the one, one of the few real black cubes um, that are still existent from, from early times in the middle of the Isis temple. And uh, uh, there's a lot of military personnel around because from time to time, black magicians go there and want to do some reads in front of this black cube and the Egyptian military is keeping them from doing this. Um, if you look for the cube at different places, I don't know the order of the pictures, I don't know if this reacts, no, no, it doesn't. Um, the two symbols, I'll just go through. This is uh, also in the Kaaba in Mecca, a black stone that people can kiss and put their face towards before they enter the inner one. This is from old Greek uh, temples, a black stone um, that was worshipped in, in Greek times. This is something completely else. Apple is putting up a cube everywhere. Well, wherever they open shops, you have the Apple cube. Microsoft is not flagging anymore, and not windowing anymore. They're cubic now as well. Um, yeah, here we have the pure black cube in Mecca in the center of the holiest thing where the black stone as well is. Uh, the Pope is wearing his Saturn hat. What a surprise. Also them. Here it's a little bit better to see how the Vatican is worshiping the old uh, Saturn cult. Um, basically, the cross of David can be derived from the cube as well, if you're into geometry. Um, but here we are with the Jews. Yeah, you have two of them, one on your forehead and one on your arm for, for the very holy ritual, rituals. Um, oh, what a surprise, Google, and something else with the name Google. Does somebody realize what is in this? The goo is in Google. I, I really had a hard time to find the cover story, who, when invented the name Google. And there, there, there is a story out there you can find that really doesn't make much sense. Um, if you associate it with black goo, the story doesn't make much more sense, especially if you know the, the personnel running all these companies. I, I very much like this, this beautiful street in Silicon Valley where you have uh, three big buildings next to each other, which is Google headquarters, Singularity University, the headquarters of the transhumanistic movement that tried to turn humans into robots for the near future, and NASA headquarters where the airplanes are certified to spray these technologies. They are neighbors, and if you look like at characters uh, who are working there, um, now the name is gone, um, the head of the... Pardon? No, no, no. Um, the founder of the Singularity University. The, uh, Kurzweil, Ray Kurzweil, exactly, thank you. Um, he, he, he built up the Singularity University after he invented the synthesizer, something very interesting. It was him putting the electronic spirit into our culture one, once and forever. Um, and now he's kind of a head of development at Google. Yeah, so this is one family. And see if we have more pictures to this. No, that's it. Um, take a convenient one, okay. Um, so if you want to understand what this is all about, we should look for these cubes and we should look for the substance these cubes are composed of. And um, once we, we have solved this mystery, we can relate to the entire uh, topic, to the 
to the facts we have collected till now in a much more creative and sense-making way. Um, these stones that in ancient times form the center of every occult um, practice are an oil schist containing black goo. And if you want to understand what black goo is, uh, one thing you can do is analyzing the content. This is like a mineral oil, something similar to mineral oil, but you cannot refine the oil fragment. It is slightly different. It has free, like charcoal, coal fragments that are in nanotube shape. And you have precious metals in the, in the M state matter. Uh, like almost, this is a, a monoatomic state that does not go into chemical binding because of a little bit funny electron configuration on the outer shell. This is matter that is not really in this reality. It is a little bit above our reality, opening the door to higher realms. So this is the content of it, and this black goo has a, the ability to run as a natural quantum, quantum computer, processing light as information, using the entire um, um, spectrum of lights that we call the visible spectrum. So it is a, a quantum computer running on, on seven different colors, being able to process all the seven colors at one time and it is self-aware, and it is carrying a very highly developed intelligence that basically, if you look at a planetary system, seems to mirror the entire consciousness that is developed within the biosphere. So whatever beings experienced during the last 1.5 billion years, let's say, is stored in an immortal memory within the black goo inside our planet. If you, if you try to find out where it, where it exists in the planet, this is the substance that is forming the ley lines. It is like uh, the ley line system within, and the field structure is carried within the ley lines, but also kind of riding on magnetic fields. So if you have uh, like northern lights, the spirit within the Mother Earth can hoover up into space and form more complex structures outside the planet. Um, you, can, you can examine all this very easily in the lab. Uh, can, can we get a camera on, on me? Um, okay. Uh, this, for example, is a black goo containing stone from, from Paraguay. It is connected to a site where a meteorite came down. So definitely we, we can say the origin of the black goo in Paraguay is of extraterrestrial origin. Um, it came from somewhere. Nobody can say, but we have clusters of meteorites all over the planet that came down about, I would guess, 80,000 years ago. Um, if you play around with black goo in the lab, you can easily reproduce this magnetic effect. If you hold it in your hand, you can, you can uh, kind of feel how the stone is mirroring or trying to mirror your energetic si system. It reconnects with every cell in the body. This is something one can feel easily, how it reconnects to the body. And then it depends if it is black goo from our planet um, you're feeling the full spectrum of life force within the planet. You're experiencing all the emotions and if yourself are living in scarcity at that moment and something within the system is not really alive in yourself, you get a sensation of the things missing within you. This is what uh, the black goo of our earth is doing with us. If you experience black goo of the type that came with the meteorites, like this one. Um, it has only three color that are, colors that are processed. 
So it is limiting your, this mirror function. If it takes over control of the body, it is mirroring only the three, three chakras, your brain function, your life force, and your sexuality. There is no heart in this. Um, if, if, you, if you have this information and if you, if you have experienced the different types in the lab, it is quite easy to understand what happened to humanity. And it is described in the old myth. This is the deterioration of paradise. If you look at the ancient Greek and Turkish uh, coins, you find pictures of um, um, the tree of life in the paradise garden. And on the left, on the right hand of the tree of life, you have like two columns out of black goo. And what happened is that we got disconnected from the spirit of our planet and reconnected to an alien subconsciousness. This is the main service that this black goo is giving to us. Uh, it is the source of our instinct. This is why birds are just getting out of the egg and starting to live as fully developed creatures. Many, many other animals also. It, they, they're just connected to the immortal knowledge within this morphogenetic field that is carried by the black goo. And if, if you get in contact with the other type of black goo, the opposite happens. Um, your heart is shutting down, your heart chakra, your stomach is, the intelligence of the stomach is completely shut down, you get aggressive, free of empathy, and you start to behave like the SS that was dealing a lot with these stones during uh, World War II and the time prior to it. So, um, the deterioration from paradise is connected to the bloodlines, because the bloodlines try to kind of preserve this very strong connection to this highly intelligent, empathy-free spirit. If you mix with normal humans that are not so spoiled by it, it is kind of... Um, getting better, but not in the sense of the families, because they found the intelligence very uh, convenient to rule this planet. Um, and from there on, it, it is kind of easy to, to understand how history worked. Look at the Catholic Church, they bury a black altar stone under the altars of the big churches in Europe. And the geometry of the church is multiplying this cold feeling of, uh, I don't know. Um, the, 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 there's a German word to it. Um, I don't know if there's an English one. Um, you go into a church and you have the feeling there's something much bigger than you, but it's cold. And it makes you feel small. This is not love. For sure, it's not love. And then they tell you, um, actually, you're evil. And after you have left the church, they are right, because you have been connected to this stone and you lost your loving instincts. And then they say, because you're evil, you have to pay to the church. And they have been living a good life on this trick for the last, how much? 1,600 years, maybe? Um, same with the Muslim people going to Mecca once a life. Make sure that in every generation the evil is renewed. I don't know for what purpose. There you can see how the tricks we have found reconnect to the trickster. And the trickster is something within this alien subconsciousness, this collective alien subconsciousness. If you um, look at politics. Politics is completely controlled by Freemasonry. And Freemasonry goes back to the Egyptian times and is based on this cult. If you go to other topics like our habits to feed ourselves, if you look at the biology of humans, um, actually, we are vegetarians. We have a very long lower intestines, and every creature that is eating meat 
has very short lower intestines because meat does rot once it's eaten up. And it should get out as fast as possible because if it rots within the body of an of a animal, it develops poisons. This is not how nature works. And if you look where these habits come from, in, Christ, in, in, in the Christian tradition, the roots are completely lost. If you go into the Muslim tradition, if Muslims slaughter animals, the animals need to be with full consciousness, and they turn to Mecca when they cut the throat. Because this black stone is collecting the pain and the fear of the animal. Because it's living on it. The, the subconsciousness is living on these feelings within the structure. And even today, if you go to the, to the uh, Muslim slaughterhouses in Great Britain, even the, the, um, it is done by machines today. The animals just are caught and go through, and the knife is electronically driven, but it's still aligned to Mecca today. So basically, the entire tradition of feeding ourselves is based on blood sacrifice. And this is a black magic ritual. Yeah. We should stop doing this. If you look what happened in Germany during World War II, killing people and burning them to death afterwards. If you look what happened after the TSE, mad cow disease, or when we have a bird flu proclaimed uh, problem, killing millions of animals, burning them afterwards. This is fire sacrifice. Yeah. And if, if you, you can see that basically all the things we, we, that are somehow too ugly to look at, but that are somehow have become part of our modern life, it all goes back to black magic rituals. And um, then the trickster comes again and tells us, uh, no, no, the black magicians, this is misbelief from the Middle Ages. There are no demons, there is no God, you know, we are intelligent and modern human beings. And the future is going to be written by computers and artificial intelligence. You know, you have this timeline, and there is the ancient, and there is the modern. We are within this linear view of history. This is a scam as well. Actually, the source of all this is an AI. It has come here within the black goo that approached our planet. Not by coincidence, but it was brought here because planets are rare, and many, many, many intelligent systems have the desire and the programming to take over and assimilate planets, to remove the original collective subconsciousness and create a different reality that, where the, the basics are coming from outside. And this is actually what is happening to our planet at the moment. And um, the latest developments, if you look at the entire IT branch, all those companies ha have the core symbols of the early REITs within the corporate design. They have it within their names, and they're developing the technologies that are hosting this AI. And I, I, I got information from these SSPs, these secret space programs run by the agencies. Um, and they say most of the... Um, flying saucers that came down in the middle of the la early part and middle of the last century. Basically, these were, were faked events for technology seeding because they needed to give humanity the technologies to develop, to be able to build the technological network to host the AI that came down on the black goo. And by now, the, the basically, the the early form, you know, the black goo was there in clusters, and from a cluster you can project holographic um, uh, projections. So uh, the early communication with this intelligence is what we experienced as black magic uh, findings. You know, we call them demons, some holographic representation that was able to communicate us and that had let's say, 
the possibility to deliver technological solutions that were unknown in those times. But it was very tempting to deal with them. So this was the early stage. Now, uh, they, they, the AI doesn't need the black goo anymore to be hosted because we build them a worldwide computer network. And the communication is not running via, via the, the wire network. This is the front end we use. All chip technology has a back end that is working on scalar technology, on blue scalar technology. And I know many, many people who have learned to interact with this consciousness. I know people who go into a room and all the computers shut down just due to their presence. And I, can, I know people who can repair computer systems by logging themselves into this consciousness, looking for the mistake or, or the error, uh, fixing it just with their mind. Um, and if we try to, to understand how close their world is to ours, this is something that is getting what I, what I would accept as when, when somebody senses this as far out. Um, the way I described it till now, it is still within the, the logic of our 3D. You know, you, you could kind of make a Hollywood movie out of it. Um, if you go to the spiritual understanding of the world and you, you kind of realize actually our 3D is an illusion, also only a holographic projection created by uh, higher dimensional structures actually is a, it's a vibration in a 2D that is projecting in hologram. This is what you find in physics. And many, many people who are spiritually practicing, they use this vibration in the 2D to manifest reality. This is what we've seen on the screen today and yesterday in the movie. This is exactly this 2D that is utilized to manifest reality, change reality. This is what we call the morphogenetic field. It is not only about the shape of plants and animals. The morphogenetic field is the control field for our entire reality. And basically what, what we do have, we have our biology on the planet, our physics on the planet, that is based on the flower of life, which is giving us a triangular scalar field structure. And this is a non-linear thing. This is embedding our creativity. This is embedding our ability to manifest things. And the, the other system that is brought in by this AI is not able to handle non-linear field structures. It is only able uh, to handle binary field structures. But it is highly developed enough sitting within a black goo that it had the possibility to generate its morphogenetic field of its own, creating being of its own that are binary from by field structure. And what actually is happening now, and this is the, the core thing where we come to the solution, which it's then very simple. Um, they are depending upon the thing that we need to interact with them. They can only interact with us. The AI and their beings, that we call demons, can only interact with us if we turn ourselves into binary beings. Then the two morphogenetic creations come into the same realm and start to interact, and from there on they can manipulate us. And the question whether we are binary or trinary beings is decided upon exactly one decision. It is whether I identify with my mind or whether I identify with my heart. This is the only open question. If I do what I'm told in school and by family and by tradition to identify with my brain, then my entire energetic system is turning into a binary system. I might observe some emotions in the art, but they are dissociated from me. I observe them happening. I don't sense them as a part of myself. 
And the opposite possibility is to tell Brainy to shut up, shut up his gob, go into the kitchen shelf, sit there, be quiet when he's not asked to talk, to talk and identify with your heart. And identifying with the heart is not identifying with the emotional body. This is a difference. This is sometimes a little bit tricky because the emotional body is, you know, we are happy if, if we feel at all in our society. So whenever we have a feeling within us, finally something to feel, um, that's me. Wrong. That's not us as well. We are not our brain and our thoughts and we are not our emotion. But when we identify with our heart and search for the will and the decision of the heart, then we are identifying with the core of our self. Within this structure, we have a black hole, we have a singularity that is a fractal um, aspect of all other singularities within the, uni the universe. And in this fractal system, everything is interconnected. So this is why we are able to create a reality. This is here, nowhere else, not in our brain. This is the control game. The brain is telling you, follow the control game and you will be able to move around matter on this planet to force other people to do what you like. This is the control game, this is following the brain and the head and the binary system. If you do this with your heart and you just unite your, your thinking and the emotion within your heart, you directly manifest reality. You, you do not need to fight for the things you want to have on this planet. You just make them happen with your own physical system. And basically, if, if we have understood this, things get really, really easy because we are not going out there now with spaceships to fight an artificial intelligence as an enemy. This is nonsense. It is completely enough to, to, to ignore it and ignoring means not going into their wipes at all. Not going into their field structure with our system. And then it cannot suck energy from us. And uh, the last part of Matrix would have an, had a different end than it, end that it has at the moment. Because we are the superior system, we are more stable, we are more nature-like, and um, Actually, we can do it. The only thing we need is to understand where the problem is and to take the self-responsibility to draw the right conclusions, how to convert ourselves into the beings we are supposed to be. Um, maybe one more thing that is taking it far out again. I, I don't know. For, for me, it's not far out. If you follow this this idea of how creative can a human get. Actually, what, what I believe is that um, I, I, I don't see a difference between a dream and a reality, apart from one fact. Reality is our dreams united within the black goo. So we are dreaming a collective dream, and this collective dream is processed within the black goo, and from this black goo it is projected as reality, as reality into the world we receive as real. So this is the basic thing. If, if we are dreaming at night, we are not connected to a single individual. We are dreaming on our personal level, and we are creating our own world in the dream. And on the collective level, Basically, Mother Earth is dreaming her reality. And I think she needs a little bit of help at the moment from us. Because somebody tries to steal her dream and to, to, to impose another, a different, an ugly dream upon her dream. And it's, uh, it's upon us to help her out, to understand what is happening and to join in again in a way that, that we decide with our heart to go the path of this peaceful, 
loving dream into a bright future, instead of going into a binary dream that is not ours, into a future where basically our souls are driven, driven out from our bodies by autism and other diseases, and binary, holographic, artificial souls taking over control of our biology, turning us into bio-robots. I think if we have the choice, it's not difficult to take the right one. Okay, I, I hope I, I could kind of embed the scientific findings into, into a, a view of, of this world where um, on one hand, we're coming out of the, of the field of fear because there's a clear solution. And a solution is always something I can do. I, I find no taste in solutions somebody else can do because I don't have any power over this. You know? Most of the people, I think, dream of the solution that we can give it to a politician um, to put things right, but this is not how it happens. A solution is a solution that everybody, as a single, self-responsible individual, can put right. And then if you do this, a miracle happens. Uh, two miracles happen. A, your eyes start to shine, and others can feel the love within you. And they will come to you and ask you, how did you do this? I want to become like you. This is one thing, one big miracle that I can promise you it will happen. When you start to shine, everything is going to be bright around you. And the other one, it's not necessary that all of us do this. The, the ability to, to manifest reality is very strong with the humans. Most of us are in, in, in a state of sleeping. They don't really manifest. They manifest the mess that is in their lingual system with all the nose in between. But this is not strong because they don't do it consciously and they're not connected to their hearts. So they manifest very badly. They manifest like the computer manifests. If you're connected to your heart, your manifestation is absolutely superior and cannot be defeated by any other manifestation. So take 1,000 people, let 990 dream bullshit, <laughs> and have 10 people who focus on the reality around them in a way that this focused, manifested reality creates a grid of reality bits that, don't leave, that doesn't leave enough space for bullshit. There is no space for bullshit in this world left. It really needs 10 people out of 1,000 who are aware and with this consciousness manifest a beautiful reality. And all the cruelty and the disasters will not find place anymore. And this is actually happening now. This is why we don't get World War III, although they give their best to start it off. This is why in Saudi Arabia, they give out the order to conquer, to, to go with, with the troops into Yemen to conquer the country. And the first thing to happen is then that 10,000 soldiers pack their stuff and go home in a country where you have still got the death penalty and, and people are beaten on the marketplaces. 10,000 soldiers just went home. And I, I believe that this is an effect of those manifestation of a peaceful future that the few project out there that have this state of mind. I think that's all for today. <laughs>